director Alexander Payne got our votes when he offered a brilliantly satirical look at politics and popularity with his insightful high school-based comedy election. He showed with sideways that he could present a story as firm and dry as a prized red wine. He's done neither with his latest offering, Downsizing. All the Oscar-winning filmmaker has shown with the production is how he came up short whether trying to make social commentary, dealing with political satire or attempting just to be funny. The film is a massively muddled mess of ideas that might have made more of an impact if Matt Damon's performance wasn't so painfully bland. It probably wouldn't have mattered with another actor, but it sure couldn't have hurt. The downsizing here has nothing to do with the cutting of employees that seems to have become a favorite corporate pastime. In this case, it's very literal. A Norwegian scientist has discovered a way to shrink a person who is six feet tall to five inches. A world of Lilliputian-sized people would put less strain on the ecology and be a financial boom because houses, cars, food, etc., would all be so small, a person's personal wealth explodes to gargantuan size. After living a life of mediocrity, Paul, Damon, and Audrey, Kristen Wiig, Safranek decide to spend the money to be downsized. Things don't go as planned, and Paul finds himself living a miserable existence in the tiny world. It gets worse when he meets NGOC Lan Tran, Hong Chao, a Vietnamese dissident who was shrunk against her will as punishment for her protests. Now she cleans up after the rich and famous. There are multiple places where the film appears to be ready to take some kind of stand but then crumbles in indecisive writing. Just before Paul and Audrey go for their transformation, they are confronted in a bar by a man who wants to know why people who are only 5 inches tall should have the same right to vote as normal size people. His argument is those who have been downsized are spending less and killing the economy. Debates on the bigotry of this thinking could have filled the movie, but Payne brushes it off with little discussion. It's the off-target way Payne presents NGOC that provides the film's most brutally bad moments. It's not the annoying accent that is so disruptive. It's the way Payne has directed Chow to deliver the lines. The delivery is so mechanical that Cha's range of emotions go from annoyingly angry to obnoxiously irritating. This comes across as even more painful to watch because Damon shows so few genuine emotions as he gets verbally smothered by Chow. The only person who looks to be enjoying the process is Christoph Waltz, who plays Damon's noisy neighbor. He's loving the small life and has even found a way to make it financially work for him. It's such a pleasure to get to see Waltz play such a character who is so in love with life, since he so often plays the dark antagonist. Payne's main theme is there will be haves and have-nots no matter what size the population. The idea of there always being a class system would be far more realistic if Payne had not made the poor and downtrodden only minorities. There has to be at least one or two white people who had problems and ended up on the wrong side of the wall.